Connell, we greatly appreciate your service. And thank you so much every year for bestowing the congressional records and, and giving us some remarks. So we started a brand new award, ladies and gentlemen. This is a brand new award. It's the IES Sales Speaker of the Year. Now, for those of you who've been coming to IES programs in the DC region, we've had over 100 amazing speakers, sales speakers, authors, thought leaders, trainers, on topics like prospecting, mindset, social media, social selling, uh, referral building, presence, presentation. So we created our first award. It's the IES Sales Speaker of the Year. And we have some great nominees. Alex Goldfain, Bill Cates, the referral coach. Bryn Tillman, she's known as the LinkedIn Whisperer. Colleen Stanley, who's written so many great books on emotional intelligence for sales leadership. Donald Kelly, the sales evangelist. Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. All these people have uh, nicknames that they're known by. Morgan Ingram, who's a great sales leader on prospecting. Rob Giles, who has uh, been on the IES stage. He also has been the keynote speaker at the IES award event as well. Sam Richter, who is a uh, savant, he's a genius on using Intel to research your sales prospects. Stephen Gaffney, the honesty guy. Todd Cohen, the sales culture guy. Everybody's in sales, good friend of the Institute. And of course, Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder has also spoken at the IES many times. He's also been the keynote speaker for our award event. So we put out a poll. We surveyed the world to find out who is the IES sales speaker of the year. And it's my honor to introduce to you Sam Richter the Intel sales search guy for the IES 2021 Speaker of the Year. So Sam, congratulations. Sam's gonna give us a keynote today. And Sam, it's, it's great to see you. You're such a great speaker. You always come so highly, highly regarded at the IES. We'd love to see you back in DC on our big stage. But thank you for all the great work that you've done. And congratulations for being the IES 2021 Speaker of the Year. Wow, I mean, wow, what an incredible honor to be named Sales Speaker of the Year by the Institute for Excellence in Sales. I mean, when I looked at all of the other nominees, I was stunned. What an incredible group that, Fred, you've brought together and, and the value that you've provided to the entire sales profession and how you've pivoted in the COVID world to bring everything online and not only continue your incredible programs, but expand them. When I looked at, again, the speaker list that you've had this past year, just incredibly amazing. And I just hope that I can follow your lead, Fred, and, and all the folks at the Institute for providing ethical leadership and training, education, and really taking the sales profession, bringing it to a new level. So again, thank you so much. Just incredibly honored for this. I, I don't even know what to say. As a speaker, it's hard to do that, not knowing what to say. But uh, again, just, just thank you to all of you and all of the attendees who voted for me. I'm just humbled and hope I can continue to provide value to all of you. So to that end, Fred asked me to give you a, a real short keynote presentation, a little value uh, to you. So your attendance, you can take a little bit of watching this tonight and, and bring it back into your daily life and help you improve your sales, your business. So let's dive in. I'm going to give you a snippet out of my keynote presentation. Every sales yes begins with a no. Now that's no with a K. Web search secrets to find the right leads at the right time with the right message. And that's what we're going to focus on over the next few minutes, the right message. How do we ensure that we're relevant to what the prospect, what our clients care about every single time. So I want you to think about the last time you met with a prospect. Maybe it was an in-person meeting, maybe it was virtually, maybe it was even a, a phone call, an email, a social media connection. How well did you really know what was going on in their world? How well did you really know their company? Was it growing? Was it decreasing in size? Were they adding staff, laying off staff? Were they a merger and acquisition target? Were they looking to acquire somebody? I would argue if you don't know the answers to those questions before you walk in the room, before you fire up Zoom, before you pick up the phone, send an email, do a social media connection, that you're winging it. So show of hands, how many of you have ever winged it before? Well, we all do it. We all go into a meeting and sometimes we're not as prepared as we'd like to be. 
So over the next couple of minutes, I'd like to answer the question, could our businesses be better if we had access to better information? We've all heard of this thing called big data, and we think that big data is all this information that big companies use to market to us or big government uses to spy on us. That's true, but the reality is all of us have access to big data. There's trillions of pieces of data floating around your head this very second because you probably have wireless internet access. The key is how do we take data and transform that into information? Translate information into knowledge and then act on that knowledge to grow our business. That's what I talk about. That's what I'm going to show you right now. You see, your prospects, your clients are amazingly passionate about one thing. What is it? Well, it's themselves. People are amazingly passionate about themselves. So how do we make sure that the first words out of our mouth are about what the other person cares about? How do we make sure that we're relevant in every communication? So we're going to be talking about news. News items. How do you find news using Google? How do you do this 30 seconds prior to any phone call, LinkedIn connection, email? Let me show you how to do it. I've got a meeting with a guy named John Hendricks. John's over at DGI Supply. So I'm going to log in to Google. I'll type in DGI Supply. Now notice that I'm using quotation marks in my search. When you use quotation marks in a search, you're telling the search engine the words within quotation marks must be in that exact order every single time. So we use quotation marks anytime we're searching for a proper noun, name of a person, name of a company, job title, or a phrase, we're going to get way better results. So again, I'm searching for DGI Supply, DGI Supply within quotation marks. I find their website address and I'm going to go look at their website. Now, when we're looking at somebody's website, what are we looking at? We're looking at their online brochure, right? They're, they're not going to tell us anything we don't need to know. I kind of call this Google Nursery School. Of course, you're going to look at their website. You've got to find out what they do for a living. But you're not getting a lot of great information looking at someone's website. So what do we do? Well, we all know about Google News. So I'm going to go in, again, DGI Supply. I'm going to go back to my search results, and I'm going to click on that News button. Because what I'm looking for is articles. What's going on in the other person's world? What do they care about today? So I click on that and nothing's there. What do you mean nothing's there? How could that possibly be nothing's there? Well, think about it for a second. DGI supplies a $50 million distribution company outside of Chicago. There's really not a lot of big publications writing about DGI supply. So what do we do? Well, we're going to go to the website yougotthenews.com. Now, you've probably never heard about it because, well, I built it. And it's one of these websites that's not going to show up in Google search results. Why? Because, frankly, I don't tell Google that it exists. The only people that know that yougotthenews.com exists are people who attend my presentations like you. Now, what's in You Got The News? We're going to find articles from trade journals, newspapers, smaller newspapers, industry journals, magazines, press releases, social media posts, what's going on in the other person's world. No registration required, completely free. Go to yougotthenews.com prior to any sales call, prior to any LinkedIn connection, email, phone call. Just do it for a few seconds and find a piece of information that's relevant to the other person. So we're going to go to You Got The News. We're going to choose Archives. We don't have to use Boolean, none of those quotation marks. DGI Supply, click on More News. A bunch of articles appear, including one on the guy we're calling on, John Henricks a gold medalist from the Australian Olympic swim team. In fact, he's the first person ever credited to winning a race because he shaved off all his body hair. I mean, how cool is that? Not the body hair part, but the Olympic part. I've never met an Olympian before. So you might be asking, well, this is great, Sam, but how do you use this information that you find without people thinking that you're some kind of a spy or a stalker? So here's the language that I use. Now it's a little corny, but it works, and it works for me every time. So feel free to modify it, make it work for you, and it goes something like this. Hey, John, you know, before I meet with people, I like to do a little bit of homework. Say you're a busy guy, and I don't want to waste your time. What have I just done? Well, I've massively differentiated myself from not only everybody that John's probably ever met with, every salesperson he's ever met with, because, you see, most people don't bother to do their homework. Isn't that crazy? In a world where we could take a mobile device, it's estimated that every word ever printed at any time by anybody in the history of the world, you can get on one of these in just a few seconds, but yet most salespeople don't do their homework. Yeah, maybe they look at somebody's website, but they don't even do that most of the time. So it's so refreshing 
when you as a buyer can hear that the salesperson actually did their homework. They did a little research. So that's the first magic phrase. Before I meet with people, I like to do a little bit of homework. Now here's the next magic phrase. So John, hey, before I meet with people, I like to do a little bit of homework. You're a busy guy. I don't want to waste your time. And guess what I found? Now, when John and I set up the meeting a few weeks back, he was like, yeah, I'll meet with you. When John saw my name on his calendar for an 8 a.m. Zoom call, a virtual meeting, what was going through his head? Oh, why? Why do I need to meet with this guy? I, I got a board meeting. I've got to get my dog to the vet this afternoon. I don't have time for this. Ah, it's 8 o'clock. I can't cancel. Fine, I'll meet. So if the first words out of my mouth in our meeting are about me, what's going on in John's head? What is he? He's like, when is this guy going to go away? He doesn't care. But what do you think happens the second I say, and guess what I found? What'd you found? What, 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 what'd you find? I have his full attention, don't I? Tell him what you found. John, before I meet with people, I like to do a bit of homework. You're a busy guy. Don't want to waste your time. Guess what I found? I was doing a little research. I saw that uh, Olympic gold medalist, Australian swim team, first person ever credited to winning a race because you shaved off all your body hair. Then here's the next magic phrase. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And then what do I do? I be quiet and I listen because for the next 20 minutes, who's John going to talk about? Himself. And that's our goal. Our goal isn't to do research to state fact. Our goal isn't to do research to be right. Our goal in doing our homework is to ask questions. Get the other person talking about him or herself because when the other person talks about themselves, well then, that's where we can learn more about them. We're going to listen carefully and we're going to align their problems, their issues, what's going on in their world with our solutions. Now, sometimes you will find information that's just not appropriate to share. You know, hey, uh, Joe, congratulations on the third divorce and the second bankruptcy. You think you'll get it right this time? No, you're obviously not going to go there. But let me ask you something. When you know something about another person and they don't know that you know it, when you know something about another person and they don't know that you know it, how does it make you feel? confident, powerful. People buy from people who they like. People buy from people who they trust. I don't know what it is, but when you're sitting across from somebody, when someone's confident, there's like energy that crosses between brains. And I think it even works in virtually, maybe even on social media and via email. But when you're confident, the other person can feel it. People like to do business with people who they like, who they trust, who they get a feeling from. That's the power of doing your homework. We're not here to state fact. We're here to ask great questions. We're here to be confident. We're here to connect with people based on what they care about. So will your business be better with access to better information? So again, thank you so much. What an incredible honor. Speaker of the Year, Institute for the Excellence in Sales. All of you, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. Fred, you are amazing. Thank you for all that you do for the sales profession. Hey, if any of you would like to reach out to me, I'm happy to help any of you in any way that I can. Just go to my website, www.samrichter.com. Thanks so much, and I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you very much again. I really appreciate it.